It's time we had the talk. When two people love each other very... No, I'm kidding. Not that talk. <laughs> Although, this one might be just as uncomfortable. Let me explain. By 2035, I will be 39. Disruptive businesses like Uber and Airbnb will have revolutionised entire markets with driverless cars and innovative renting services. Two-thirds of our world will live in cities. Social enterprises that help the community and planet will prevail over traditional business and charity models. And our entire society will be cashless with a shift to electronic money. But here's the thing. From the moment I was born, I've had a cultural narrative set out in front of me that I'm expected to follow, which is based on the 20th century. Go to school, learn from a set curriculum, achieve good grades, complete a degree, get a hex debt, work nine to five, climb the ladder, earn more money, buy more things, get a mortgage, reproduce, and then place the same expectations on my children. When I look at this narrative, I can't help but wonder, isn't it based on the assumption that the world of tomorrow is going to resemble the world of today? Our economy, workforce and industries are changing rapidly due to automation, artificial intelligence, digital disruption, but also a shift in mindset because people don't want to work just any job. We want to do something meaningful with our lives. I'm not a futurist, so I don't know for sure what our world will look like in 20 years, but what I can guarantee you is that it won't look anything like it does today. So why on earth are we raising the next generation to live the same lives as previous generations? To me, it makes no logical sense. Now, as a young person standing up here today, questioning this path, I'm not rejecting earlier generations, I'm not placing blame, I'm not giving up. I'm simply saying we need to have the talk. And it's an uncomfortable one, but it's one that's everybody's responsibility, my generation included. So why do I believe that this uh, narrative is no longer relevant? I think it comes down to two main reasons, context and purpose. Some say it's because today's young people have different values to older generations, but I don't think that's necessarily true. We share many of the same values, the desire for connection, security, freedom, fulfillment. But in the context of the 21st century, how we live out those values is inevitably going to be different. As with most of us, there is one question that I have been asked since I could talk, which I've heard a thousand times throughout my 19 years on this planet. What do you want to be when you grow up? Here's what's wrong with that question. 44% of jobs today won't exist in 20 years, and 65% of jobs in 15 years don't yet exist. I'm expected to have 13 jobs in four different industries over my lifetime, and not just work a single job at one time, I'll have a portfolio career. And here I was being asked as a child to choose a future career path, but by the time I enter the workforce, that entire industry might have come and gone. My generation and the ones following will need to become job makers, not job takers. Because in our rapidly changing society, it's actually the person who's changeable who's going to propel us forward, not the person living yesterday's narrative. We have to adapt based on circumstance. In order to do this, areas like uh, education have a key role to play. So if our school curriculum, the very thing that's supposed to prepare young people for tomorrow's world is predetermined based on the context of yesterday, old industries, technologies, processes, then that's a problem. Who here has ever been sitting in a meeting and thought, why am I here? I cannot see the value in this. Right? We've all been there. And in fact, that exact same question has crossed my mind countless times throughout the last 13 years of my life, sitting in classrooms, learning a lot of stuff I'd never use. 
I graduated year 12 last December. Year 12 is basically about memorizing content to then regurgitate back onto exam papers. Sorry, learning. <laughs> but seriously, like, how does this serve us? For starters, we don't need to remember things like we used to because information is always available to us. We've literally got access to the world through something we keep in our pocket. A teenager today with a mobile phone can access information quicker than the President of the United States could 15 years ago. And that smartphone has more computing power than Apollo 11 did when it journeyed to the moon. Futurist uh, Nicholas Negroponte has correctly predicted major inventions since the 70s, which were at the time scoffed at, like um, touch screens replacing computer mouses and reading books on tablets. Last year, he delivered his 15th TED Talk, announcing his next major prediction for the coming 30 years, being able to ingest information rather than consuming it through our eyes and ears. Want to learn a language? Take a pill, it will break down, travel through your bloodstream, reach your brain, and deposit the information in the right places. Now, regardless of whether or not you think that will happen or whether you think it's a step in the right direction, my point is, Knowledge and information is widely available. So the question is no longer how do we access it, but what are we going to do with it? If knowledge is power, how will we use this incredible power we now possess? My generation are set on doing something of purpose. Having access to an abundance of knowledge is exciting but it also exposes the shadows in our society. Social inequality, economic disparity, conflict, poverty, in, uh, and animal abuse, environmental exploitation, and a population who, let's be honest, are mostly in debt, dispassionate about their work, and in a state of physical and mental dis-ease. I don't need to spout the figures, we all know these are serious problems. You don't need to be the Dalai Lama to realize you can't find purpose in material wealth. I've known several people in my life who have retired and looked back on their lives, surrounded by their stuff, and said, what the heck was that for? And it's not that they didn't try and seek a purposeful pathway, it's that they lived in a system that made it very difficult to do so, but not anymore. The context has changed, meaning that coming generations are able to embrace the knowledge and opportunities created by the hard work of previous generations to lead a truly meaningful existence, find purpose. Now, I want to be honest. Not all young people are set on changing the world. Some, some of us are trying to find purpose in gaining 10,000 Instagram followers. <laughs> but for many of us, it's about seeking to discover our passions and live a life that makes us excited to get up each morning. And for some, it's about standing up for what we believe in and leaving our mark. And I'm one of those. And it started for me at age 13. I witnessed a piece of footage which is still burnt in the back of my mind. She was young, malnourished and injured, walking slowly through this scene of uh, endless destruction. And her name was Josie. I learned that Josie had lost her habitat to deforestation. The rainforest she had lived in had been logged and burnt and a native tribe displaced, and Josie, and her baby were left to starve. All for commodities like timber and palm oil that would end up right here in Australia. So using our clunky old family PC, I developed an educational website, which would soon inform over half a million people annually from more than 200 countries about the issue of deforestation and what we can do. I became set on changing the world and wanted to escape my classroom to pursue what I was genuinely passionate about. And 
I was really lucky. I went to a great public school and thankfully they were flexible towards my somewhat stubborn mindset. Since the age of 13, I've lived with uh, indigenous communities in the Bornean jungle to develop conservation projects. Stood on the steps of parliament, speaking to a crowd of thousands about the atrocities of live export. Helped lead a campaign with a team of 18 to 26 year olds that raised $1.6 million to alleviate extreme poverty. I've even volunteered as a journalist at the London Olympic Games, reporting for athletes from developing nations so that their families at home could track their performance. I now work in campaign communications at the country's foremost animal protection organisation, Animals Australia, as well as running a business speaking at schools, universities and companies. Through a youth-led social enterprise, my friend Lexi is helping families in India's slums move from kerosene to cheaper and cleaner solar power. My friend Jacob, who as a transgender person has the life expectancy of 30, is helping change that stat by advocating for the prevention of suicide within the LGBTQ community. And my friend Nada studied criminal justice, the first in her family to surpass year 10, and is an active voice for young Indigenous Australians. Isn't it remarkable that the context we now live in allows us to pursue our purpose and create choose your own adventure lives rather than thanks to 31 years of service, here's an engraved pen. <laughs> so let's stop trying to push outdated expectations onto young people. We need to evolve. So can't we instead foster and encourage innovation and creativity, entrepreneurialism, financial literacy, critical thinking, rather than stuffing information in young people's heads and saying, now follow this path. Instead of asking me what job I wanted to go into, I wanted my parents and teachers and aunts and neighbours to ask what I'm passionate about, what I desire, what kind of society I want to live in, and how I could create a legacy to help make that place a reality. Because it's the role of each generation to forge a new path. But that progress can happen so much quicker with the support of other generations. So now that we've had the talk, I have a proposition for you. Let's work together to take advantage of today's context, design a new purposeful narrative and fulfill our obligation of overcoming humanity's current challenges. Because then, we can do the same with the next generation. Thank you so much.